Hello there, and welcome back to The End is Nigh. Last time, I traveled down the third path from the split, the one that starts with the retrograde. And I made it through in record time for me. That was definitely a lot easier than the first stages of the other two pathways, and I think I have having done those stages first to thank for that. It gave me a bit of extra practice. I think, what, I only had around a hundred or so deaths there? That's pretty good for this game, for me at least. Anyway, I arrived at here, the machine. Which looks like it has even more new mechanics, which, as I've said before, I really wish they would have introduced a little bit more quickly. But it is what it is, so... I can have this complete right now if I jump over, but I need that tumor. I can't drop down quickly enough, so I'm gonna have to jump and just time it properly, which I failed to do. Such is my luck. Oh, I just realized that there were toxic gas clouds as well. I didn't actually see those before. Which is going to make getting that tumor even more difficult. Now I just need to stick the landing. Perfect. But uh, the track in this world is what I like to call the Bee Song. I don't remember if that's like from a movie or some dumb viral video. Probably a dumb viral video. But I can't help but think of being chased by bees when I hear this track in particular. And that kind of ruins any tension or atmosphere that this stage may have otherwise had. Fortunately, this game isn't really going for creating a tense atmosphere for the most part, so it's not a huge deal. I'm just saying. Why didn't I just grab onto the ledge using that one technique I know works? I don't know, but I just didn't think of to do that. And now I have more time to get through this level as my punishment as a result. But so far, the machine definitely doesn't seem that bad. Definitely easier than even the SS Exodus was at the start, which... As I've said before, I'm always thankful about having a bit of an easier time in this game. It's nice to have a break and not just a constant barrage of difficulty, you know? Now this tumor here is guarded fiercely by this auto turret. I'm not sure what the best way is going to be to pick it up. Maybe just to do a short hop before it locks onto me? Yeah. Alright. I've still yet to have found the key. I wonder if I could have come across it in a secret in a previous world. I know if I'll have to end up finding that through backtracking or if it lies ahead. Okay, so here we have Yoku blocks. It figures the game would utilize these at some point. At least the blocks aren't appearing individually and they're appearing as a set. That makes it a bit easier to tell what they're gonna do. Alright. This shouldn't be so bad. Yeah. Again, the difficulty of this stage thus far is actually quite tepid and ooh, even new mechanics, I think. Yeah, it's basically uh, streams of water in the middle there. That's actually pretty cool. I like that. Okay, I actually managed to pick it up. Now the question is, can I survive? I'm hoping that just doing a leap from here will be enough. Please game, just give it to me. Okay, thank god. Um, the smoke shouldn't hurt me, I'm pretty sure. So if I think I want to save my progress by retreating to the previous screen, it'll be most safely done like this. Yeah. Yeah, the difficulty curve in this game is kind of completely out of whack. Like, I don't know exactly how they intended for you to go through the stages, but for me the obvious way is to just pick one path at random and then stick with it. But given how difficult the various stages have been, it almost feels like they expect you to do the first stage of each of the paths in a specific order at that, and then the second stage in another specific order. Because I had the most trouble with the first path I chose, and everything after that has been considerably easier. And again, it might just be Golgotha in particular, because I honestly didn't have too much trouble with the Hollows. 
It's really just those Chain Chomp enemies in Golgotha that so consistently ruined me. But like this, as far as a challenge goes, isn't really all that difficult to deal with just dodging these bullets. Now if you're wondering why I'm not just going to the end, it's because not only am I not sure that I can, I might need to grab that ledge over there, I'm also thinking that this ledge might be a secret. I'm not 100% sure what the best way to grab it is though. At least if I screw up, okay. So I grabbed it easily enough, but it doesn't actually seem to be responsible for anything. Why then is it there? That's just a superfluous detail. Alright, that's close. I'm not sure if I can jump to the upper ledge or if I'll need to grab the lower one first. It's honestly hard to say. I grabbed the lower one just to be safe. And progress finished. But I see another possible secret. Yep. Simple enough. I'm surprised it doesn't continue sinking and thus force you to time it a little bit better. Again, secrets being surprisingly easy compared to the regular stages. Okay, so I could drop down there, but the question is, do I want to? I mean, I can't really continue this way, can I? I can, okay. Anything hidden here, perhaps? No. Ooh, I guess it's giving me a decision to make. I'm gonna take dropping down as being more likely to be backtracking, so I'm gonna head there last. I'll try out this place first. Alright, that was a surprisingly easy challenge, and it's just a free Mega Tumor. Okay, I'll take it. Rather than taking the exit, though, I'm gonna retreat a little bit. I want to see where that Q path lies. Also interesting to note, this is the first time I've come across one of these cube-sealed pathways outside of the future. Perhaps that's hinting at something. I avoid the bullets, but end up dying to the spikes. Of course it's the spikes. I wonder if in any of the uh, menus if there's stats saying exactly what you've been killed by and how many times. I really hope so. I'll look out for that at some point when I'm feeling bored. Because that's the kind of thing that's cool in a game like this. You're going to be dying so many times, it's cool to see exactly what killed you. And what killed you the most. For my money, it would probably be spikes, although the bullets might be a close second if I keep failing as I have been. There we go. Oh, this is a rude sequence, so there's got to be something good here. Alright, I think I have it this time. Dodge and weave, dodge and weave. And there's even more to deal with, fantastic. Again, just continued series of jumpings at the right time is kind of the way to handle a challenge like this. Because if you don't just keep on going constantly, that's when the bullets catch up to you. So, two Mega Tumors hidden in this secret area. Things are expanding. And hey, I'm at stage four. I could go back and get that uh, other, that last remaining future area back in the end, but I'll save that for later when I'm going back through all the worlds to collect every everything I missed. Um, I would like to talk to that group of ghosts over there, but I don't think I can jump over, unfortunately. Maybe I will end up getting some sort of movement upgrades at some point. I've seen enough things like that that it's not any. It's not a completely unrealistic possibility. I'm trying to grab onto this ledge here, but I'm not sure if there's a thing I can do. Yeah, not a fan of the way that these gravity portals interact with the other movement. Just ends up feeling a little bit awkward. I guess that could, though, just be because I'm not used to using them all that much. But again, my ever... my oft-repeated complaint with this game, the fact that they introduce mechanics too slowly, like... 
It took till now to introduce these. They, these totally could have been introduced in an earlier world in more complex situations. And that would result in a game that is just as difficult, but just, you know, shorter with less padding. That is easily this game's biggest flaw and why I keep hopping on it. Just there's too much stuff. Ah, oh, Neela got the tumor. And that results in basically extended playtime, but it's basically just empty calories. It's not actually filling in any real meaningful way. And that would actually be the main reason why I would probably not recommend picking this game up more than anything. Not the price, not the fact that it is a genre that is uh, not going to appeal to a lot of people. Just the fact that there's too much filler. God damn it. Okay, that took way more attempts than it really should have, but that's kind of my fault. Alright, you can dive through these bullets as I make my way upward. Not too difficult. And I seem to have found the key that I've been looking for, and it's just hanging out here in the open. I totally would have thought that it would have been hidden, but I guess not. Wait a minute. I don't have a way of progressing here. I'm going to have to backtrack at this point, aren't I? Assuming I can make it out of here alive, that is. Which is not guaranteed. I think it'll be easiest if I drop. I just need to time it right. Oh, of course not. Now I'm going to have to repeat that rigmarole. Ah. Ah, it wasn't so bad this time. Now I just need to make it out of here without dying, which again is still not guaranteed, especially now that I have this volley of bullets. It's not the ascent that's difficult, it's the descent. Especially what with how slow it is, really. It might be better if I just pick the right time and drop down more than anything. Rather than trying to do it slowly. Uh, screw it. I cannot believe I managed that. Okay, so, um... Yeah, there's no obvious path of progression here. I mean, it might be possible to progress, but I think given the fact that I was just straight up given the key, that's not what the game wants me to do, so... Let's warp back to the start of the zone. I forget exactly where the keyhole was, but I think it was earlier on rather than later. So it'll be quicker if I just go from the start. Uh, no keyhole here. I realize that I really should be able to remember considering it hasn't been all that long, but again, my memory is kind of shit. Here it is, okay. It's interesting that this area uses the key as a form of actual progression, rather than just providing secrets like it would be in the previous ones. And again, that's the game opening up just a little bit too late for my liking. Oh, something is totally going to be unleashed when I pick up that cube, isn't it? Yeah, I saw something spreading across the treadmill there. I'm just not entirely sure what that was. Or not, okay. I thought something was heading across the bottom, but I guess I was just seeing things. Uh, I really should be doing the bottom section first, though. It's the more difficult one with the bullets. It's actually not that bad, though. Again, the difficulty here is surprisingly tepid compared to what I've done before. Oh, I do have to do this one first, right? Oh, Tuma, I missed you. Probably could have picked it up too had I been a little bit quicker. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to reset. I have to go fast right from the get-go. Okay, Tumaget. Um, yeah, let's have that saved. 
I mean, I would save time if I had just managed to beat it on that run through, but if I didn't manage to beat it, I need to pick up the Tuma again, which is its own set of difficulties. And probably would have resulted in me taking longer. But yeah, this is like, even as many times as I died doing this segment, including that time right there. Like, this room, compared to a lot of the ones I've done thus far, is balanced to be quite easy, honestly. Like, it's really not that difficult of a challenge. And I mean that in a about as objective a sense as you can when you're talking about difficulty. And it's just, it's weird. Like, if I were to draw the difficulty curve of this game, it would probably end up doing a bunch of loop-de-loops. And, uh, it's not exactly a good thing, as fun as shapes loop de loops are. Oh, these spike boys have ledges on them. I didn't see that at first. Alright, gotta get the cube up there. And I'm also gonna want that tumor, of course, but not those tumors. No, I need the friendly tumors. Okay, that was actually pretty tricky. Those tumors would be in stealthy coming after me that way. They're learning, they're evolving, they're adapting. Uh, that means I actually need to grab one of these really quickly or I'm going to get dead. Uh, a bit of an emphasis on speed here, which is welcome. I haven't seen much of that since doing Golgotha. Okay, I'm gonna tentatively say I've made it. Yeah, because all I needed to avoid was the gas cloud and the spikes and go through fast so the tumors didn't run after me. Oh, that was a fun screen. And by fun, I mean the exact opposite of that word. Picking up this tumor is going to be equally fun, I think. Can't believe I didn't die there. Oh, I jumped just a little bit too high at the end. As always, I managed to fail to stick the landing. I don't know why I'm surprised at this point. That is a thing I am actually consistently good at, as I've noted. Okay, I actually finally managed to make it, and I'm immediately going to backtrack back into this almost literal hell. Just to see on the off chance if there's a secret over there. I'm not going to consider that attempt as uh, covering that possibility because, yep, of course there's a secret. I got killed by the tumors that first time, so I figured it was worth another look-see, and what do you know it was? Uh, okay, I'm just gonna trigger this guy and then move past. Actually, I should be safe there, yeah. Um, what do these do? Oh, they do different things now. They activate the platforms. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, I see what I'm gonna need to do here. Actually, I'm not 100% sure what is triggering these guys. It is me passing under them, isn't it? Yeah, as always. Right, I didn't think it would immediately start going down that way, so it took me a little bit by surprise. Oh, right, I have to keep watch on both sides of the screen when I'm heading down like that. Because there's boys on the right and boys on the left. Boys all around. All around town. But, while I'm waiting for them to reset, it's not so bad, actually. Okay, that was actually not a difficult secret. And one last bit of acid water, just as a fuck you. A personal one, for McMillan. Oh, and of course it puts me here, I have to go through this crap again. At least I don't need to pick up the tumor this time, ugh. 
Yeah, there was a bit there where I was actually getting back into the game, but once again, I'm starting to lose interest. And it is due to that biggest complaint that I have of that there is too much filler and that, as a corollary, the game just feels like it doesn't respect my time. Like, it's like, oh, you have an hour to spend on basically what is 10 minutes worth of content, right? And it's like, no, no, I don't. Well, I do, actually. I wouldn't be doing this otherwise, but there are better things I could be spending it on is the main point. Uh, let's see, what have I collected so far? I've actually been pretty thorough, which is nice. So, hopefully I'll manage to get the cartridge here. I've missed two in the worlds I've just done, which is pretty poor showing. And then the main reward is the heart for my little friend. Alright, these are bouncy boys, good. Alright, I'm gonna have to go right from the start, I think. I can stay just barely out of their clouds if I hop like this. And I think the tomb is going to be just a manner of dropping at just the right position. I almost had it there. This will take another attempt though at least. Uh, I was hoping maybe I could uh, stay on the upper platform and that would make the drop easier, but of course that doesn't quite work. I think I missed my opportunity there anyway just because of how high the tomb itself was. You know what? I'm just gonna go down and have that saved. I think that's the easier way of handling this. Now the question is, which path do I take? I'm assuming they both lead onwards, although one might be a secret, so perhaps I should check them both before deciding. Alright, well, this is the path forward, so let's see what's over to the left. Oh, this is fascinating. The Machine 14. I also just realized that, yeah, I picked up a key before, but it wasn't a permanent upgrade like I thought. There's one right over there that I'm presumably going to need somewhere else, so they're one-time use Zelda-style keys. I wonder how that's going to work with the previous locks I've encountered then. Am I going to need to bring keys from this area? Because that would be interesting. Alright, well I got a sneak preview at what looks like is going to be an annoying screen on the other side. So that's great. I won't have to deal with that just yet though. Alright, more robust Yoku blocks, that's fine. I like Yoku blocks, especially when they actually show multiple ones at once. Rather than, oh, rather than uh, just showing them one at a time like the classic Mega Man ones. Because it's those ones that are especially infuriating. These ones are pretty fair. It's just a matter of falling in the right time and the right place for this tumor. Which I seem to be consistently failing. Alright, I'm just gonna have that saved, because that's more convenient. And again, I have a choice. I'm gonna head left, because I'm assuming that's how I get to that key, and I'm probably gonna need that for progression. Okay, there were spikes on the top of there. Again, why are some of the spikes so tiny that makes them so easy to miss, which, um... I mean, I guess you could count that as difficulty, but I would not count it as good difficulty. Wow, that bullet had surprisingly good tracking. I didn't even realize it was going to come close to me. And I am punished with more content. Oh boy. That's about the best thing the game could do to punish me, really, <laughs> given my uh, stated opinions on it. At least there aren't spikes here, so I'm free to hop and skip. Um... Hmm... So, given the way the screens are positioned, the Machine 14 should be directly below here, I'm pretty sure. And yet, there doesn't seem to be a pathway to it, which leaves me a little bit concerned. I see one place where there might be a pathway. 
So I'm going to check that out before I proceed. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, it was indeed. And now I actually have two keys. So I guess the purpose of this place is to pick up as many keys as possible. And that way I can use them in the previous worlds. I actually like that aspect. That's actually a pretty good bit of Metroidvania open world design. Again, I just wish it had come more quickly. And on the back of less repeated content. Yeah, this is really not well designed. It's just a lot of waiting, a lot of busy work. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm assuming the keys stay unlocked. So I think I could just start from this side. Okay, good. That'll actually make this a fair bit easier, I think. I guess that's probably what they intend you to do, to be fair. So I suppose it's not quite as poorly designed as I initially stated. It is still kind of poorly designed though, if you ask me. Hmm, I'm actually... Whoa, I just jumped to 15. I guess that makes sense since 14 was earlier and all. Uh, anything hidden up here? Doesn't look like it, unfortunately. I wonder if it's possible to make it through this place using less keys than I have. Because so far all the key doors in here have been in critical places that you have to go through in order to progress. So my initial guess is no, but maybe I'm just missing something. That is entirely possible. Um, is there ever a break in the bottom set? Because if not, I'm just going to have to speed through there if I want to pick up that tumor. And that's definitely going to be tricky. I think I'll start from the right side of the screen. As in many cases, that's just easier. So basically just speeding forward like that. Okay, made it once again. This time in a bit of a trickier situation, but I think I have it. Yeah, that was not a good challenge at all. See, what makes a good challenge in a game like this, in my opinion at least, is having two elements to it. A cerebral element where it's about thinking what you need to do in order to make it through. And how that evolves as you actually go through it, as you realize, oh, I can use this thing over here instead of this other thing I was using. And it ends up giving you an easier time. The other element is the Twitch-based, immediately reacting to what's currently going on. Like uh, what I'm doing right here with these swamps. And these chain chomps who I did not notice before, and now I'm in a tricky position. I also see that there's one on the top path and one on the bottom path. Um... I don't know which path I should take first, if there's a superior one or not. I guess I'll choose the bottom one since at the moment that's a little bit easier. But yeah, those are the two main components to any challenge in, a, in this genre. And that challenge there for picking up that one tumor really only had the latter path, the twitch-based action. There really was no cerebral element of figuring out better ways to do things. It's just waiting for the tumor to drop down and then speeding past as soon as one of the spike blocks uh, makes its way past you so that you can get to the tumor before the next one comes. And that was ultimately how I did it, but I had figured that out like 30 seconds into figuring out how I would solve that. And it still ended up taking me like, I don't know, I didn't time it, but probably like five to seven minutes to do. Which basically just meant a lot of boring busy work, which again is one of my big problems with the game. And that's why that's a bad challenge and why there have been so many bad challenges thus far. And I like this, the speedy can. It's actually less dangerous than the regular ones because as long as you're moving fast enough, it can't actually catch you all that well. It's only when you hesitate for a moment that it's actually going to catch up. Which makes it overall a little bit easy to deal with. Still not easy, I would say, but easier. I just need to pick the proper timing and just go through with it. And if I don't, I just gotta 
circle around, yeah, like so. So the blocks are gonna get uncollected if I leave the screen, and I have two mists to deal with down there as well. Which is probably going to be the most difficult bit now that I think about it. I'm not sure how I'm gonna manage to make it down there, collect the cube, and travel back up all in time to avoid the uh, growth of the tumors. Now see, this is what I mean by a cerebral challenge. It's a test of my brain about exactly how I'm gonna approach the situation, and that makes it interesting even if it ends up taking me several minutes to figure out how to do it, because there's a lot of thinking involved. Unlike that previous challenge, the one with the tumor. I'm hopping on that so much because, well, it is a singularly bad challenge. There are a lot of singularly bad challenges in this game. And really, just getting rid of all of those would, again, reduce the content of the game and make it just an overall much better play experience. And then again, I'm just a layperson, so what do I know? I'm not actually a game designer. And I'm sure to someone that means a lot. After all, you have to have made at least one movie in your life to criticize movies, right? That's how it works. I guess I need to leap down, lock it to the right side, and then quickly clamber back up on the moving wall. That's the only way I'm going to do it before the tumors have time to catch me. Ooh, that works as well. Uh, at least if I don't fail to pick up the cube, my bad. As it turns out, having reduced speed from falling from less far up was the key. And again, that was something I, you know, thought of in the middle of there. Again, that cerebral element that I've been talking about. Oh, this is fascinating. Alright, we have a ghost boy. Pac-Man ghost, actually. And a cartridge up there. I'm not sure which path I should be taking, though. I guess I'll take this one. I'll have to see where the right path leads afterwards. Okay, so this one just leads to a tumor. That's fine. Uh, a tumor that I don't appear to have access to. Oh, this is gonna be fun. I see those cubes now. Well, as annoying as this is going to be, it is a new challenge, and I'm thankful for that. Alright, it looks like the growth of the tumors is slow enough that I actually have the ability to reset their movement fairly easily. Wait a minute. Are some of these fake? Do I need to take them in the proper order? Is there actually a bit of a puzzly element in a challenge in this game? That's something that there really hasn't been before. Um... I think they're entering the screen at different times. Maybe I need to pick the first one, which I think would be this one. That seems to have worked. Maybe I need to take every other one. It's hard to tell exactly what it is I need to do. However, that does seem to have worked. I guess I'll pick up the last one now and uh, hope it works out. I'm approaching this slowly and cautiously. I don't want to lose the progress I've made thus far. Slowly and cautiously. I need to win the race like the tortoise. And there you go. Of course, usually picking up the Mega Tumor is the difficult part in the challenge, and then escaping afterwards is easy. And not so here, which again is a, another way that this thing, this secret changes things up a little. Um, I guess I just need to pick these ones up now, yeah. So it's basically one set is for opening up the left doors, one set is for opening up the right. And I just picked up the wrong one, God damn it! Now I've lost track of which one I need to pick up. Oh dear. Still, though, as frustrating as this is, I do like it. Alright, two more to remove. Um, crap, I'm not sure which ones I need to pick up. 
I like having a bit more puzzly elements and starting from the beginning, of course. I'll see when I've actually solved this. Okay, well, that's one secret done. Let's uh, do the other one then. We'll see if that one too ends up being a bit of a puzzle. Hmm, no, just a simple timing challenge, it looks like. I can pretty much keep my progress halted if I just keep tapping down. So it shouldn't be so bad. Uh, I guess I need to tap faster. Yeah, like that. I like that repeated splatting sound. It's amusing. Oh, okay, there's three secrets here apparently, okay. So, Yoku blocks combined with moving platforms. That's... Um... Fun. That's an NPC. Uh, let me talk to him. Oh. <laughs> okay, fair enough. That was actually pretty good. There we go. That wasn't so bad. So, that's another secret acquired, but then of course... There is still that key over there. A uh, cartridge, rather. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to make my way over to it, though. There's no obvious entrance into that area, not that I see. Let me head back down here and see if there's anything that might be hiding. No invisible pathways, unfortunately. I guess this would be why they give you this leave area option. So if you're searching for that. Maybe... I need to get to this area from other s from some other secret entrance. That might be the case. I can't help but feel that it should be somewhere here, though. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might just have to leave this one alone and figure it out later. As much as that pains me to say, I really want that cartridge. Oh well. And here we have a comparatively easier Yoku Block segment. The inclusion of the tumor makes it a little bit more difficult, but not hugely so. Yeah, see, that took me like, what, three attempts? Wasn't bad. Hold on, I should be able to grab onto that ledge if I time it just right, I think. That would definitely be the easiest way of handling this. That tomb is going to make it a little bit more troublesome, but I think I can do it. I'm only a few pixels off is the thing, which is why I'm convinced that I can. Maybe I should give it up. Nope, perfect. Oh, that opened up another gravity portal. Fascinating. No doubt that leads to a secret. Perhaps that leads to the cartridge. This game has the most boring questions for me to ask of it, doesn't it? Oh, maybe this leads to a secret, maybe this leads to a secret, repeated to the nth millionth times. That's another issue with this game. I, I That actually ties into my complaint before about it having too much, sorry, too little content stretched too thin. Mechanically speaking, compared to something like, say, oh, I don't know, since I used this comparison before, I guess I'll use it again. Shovel Knight. Comparing them mechanically, this is a much simpler game, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're designing a simple game, you have to keep that in mind and give the game an appropriate amount of content for how complex it is mechanically. And that's something that the developers here really haven't managed to do all that well, in my opinion. That just... it's another facet of that issue that I keep bringing up. Ah, uh, okay, these are gravity portals. I couldn't quite see them because of the white background. Ooh, this area is designed pretty nicely. Looks like another secret area with multiple secrets. I'm fine with that. It adds a tiny little bit of intrigue. Alright, now actually making it up these Yoku blocks while also diving out into the air pockets. That's actually going to be somewhat tricky. That adds an interesting wrinkle to the Yoku block situation. But I seem to have solved it. Alright, got a Mega Tumor, but I'm not gonna leave just yet. There were other things here. 
I wonder if I could jump off the uh, right side of that and make it somewhere else. That's actually a possibility. Let me try that. It also might just end up being a kill box. Okay, it was just a kill box. Poor Shay McMillan using the kill box. That is the least interesting bit of, like... That is the least interesting way you can block off an area f from the player. Wait a minute, how do I break through those? There are no ledges that I can actually grab onto near it. The only ledge, in fact, is the one on the left side. Does that mean that leaping from it will act in a different way than I expect with the gravity wells? Let's see. Oh, that is actually really cool. The gravity wells keep any momentum that you have when entering them. See, there's a lot of interesting ways they could put that mechanical interaction to use. And I'm sure they will. It's just that I probably won't be seeing that for another few worlds. And again, that's what's disappointing. Um... Hmm... Okay, made it, and I'm just gonna take that exit for what it is. Although there may have been more stuff hidden up there. I really wish I had checked this out beforehand, but I was thinking about leaping from one of those upper platforms over to the leftmost side of that first screen of the secret, where that wall was. I was thinking of maybe making it over there, but... I kinda wanna be done with the machine, so I think I'm just gonna make progress now. I've actually done a really good job of collecting stuff. The only thing I've missed is a tumor? And the cartridge, and I know roughly where the cartridge is, just not exactly how to get to it. I'm not actually sure which Tuma I missed. It's uh, two screens back, it looks like. Which screen was that? Eh, I do have to come back here for the cartridge, so I think I'll just leave that for later. Let's just finish this asshole of an area. Asshole more in the sense of it being stinky than it being a huge dick. And yep, as I thought, this was indeed the end of the area. Got my buddy a shiny new heart. Okay, now let's get the hell out of here before these tumors come after me. Okay, so... Let's return to the end. Uh, what? Oh, I guess I used the world map wrong, right? I always end up going to the wrong area because I see that huge flashing arrow and think, oh, that's the screen that I'm cur the wall that I'm currently selecting. No, it's the one that your little guy is at at the bottom. And that always trips me up. So let's see what happens when I return these three parts all the way back to his home at the end. Body. Head. And a shiny new heart. Hey there, little buddy. How you doing? Dear best friend, last night was amazing! We have so much in common, you and I. I mean, it was great. The whole night was great. So, I took some pictures, you know, just to remember all of the great times we had. Spoilers, the photos are great. Oh, I love that cheeky little wink you did in that last picture. So erotic. What I really can't believe is that we both like video games and flies. What are the chances of that, right? I made you, oh, I had my doubts. But, you know, you turned out to be the real deal. The hardship was totally worth it. I'm heading to bed. My head is still spinning from all that juice we drank. It almost feels like you slipped something into my drink. Uh, how, how, how are you feeling? Did, did you have as good a time as I did? Okay, we, we, we can talk about it tomorrow, but one last question, okay? Do you like me as much as I like you? What? Oh. Oh. Fuck. What the 
fuck? How the fuck does the Earth die twice? <laughs> 